Hi, and welcome to a SliceSoft demo showing you how to copy a DVD. This will show you a simple walkthrough using any DVD running in the background and clone DVD tool. First of all, we need to see that any DVD is running, and if the little red fox is in the taskbar, it is. We insert a DVD in our drive. Any DVD will discover it and scan it, and report its status in an info balloon in the lower right hand corner of our screen, shown here. I can have a look at some information after the scan, but with a single click on the box. The Any DVD status window opens, showing me my hardware, the media type, the video DVD, and some of the protections found and removed by Any DVD. So I'm going to click OK and close this, and we can start Clone DVD 2 now. The main frame opens, and here you see the three major functions of Clone DVD 2. Copy DVD titles lets me select and copy one or more titles. Clone DVD is for copying an entire disk. Write existing data is a handy feature for copying a pre-existing disk image or video folder I saved previously on the PC. For this demonstration here on the first menu, I'm going to select Copy DVD Titles. Now we need to get access to the DVD data, so I'll click here on the Browse button. An Explorer-like window opens, and I need to locate the drive with my movie. There it is. I give it a single click, and then I click OK. Of course, if you have more than one drive, you want to always make sure you're selecting the correct drive. Clone DVD opens the structure, and here you see the frame filling with the DVD data. All the titles here are on the right-hand side with the audio settings, chapters, playtime, etc. To the left-hand side, we see information about our specific title, in this case, the main movie. If you had selected another title here, you may want to use the Preview tab, which will run the preview of that individual title to make sure you've selected the right one. When doing the main movie, of course, you don't need to use the Preview tab. One more thing on this frame you may want to consider is the Preserve Menus option, shown here. This may be necessary with certain types of DVD protection, and if you're not 100% sure, just leave it checked. If you specifically do not want menus in your copy, you would leave this box free. Now we need to set the correct size for burning. For most of your home video needs, you will select Single Layer Media, and this is the DVD5 option, shown here, which is default. You make the selection via a drop-down menu. Note also the quality scale to the right of the selection. So I'm going to click Next and go to the next frame. The audio and subtitle settings opened. And on the left side, we see again our title information, the stream configuration, and the subtitle that are available for this particular title. On the right side, you can see the global stream preferences shown here. For our particular DVD, we don't have that many, but you may have here a rather extensive list. In order to get the best possible video quality, you should remove all those audio and subtitled streams you don't need on your copy. You would select a title and check or uncheck those streams you want to include or exclude. It's up to you. So now we're going to click Next, and we go to the Output Method frame. On the right side are the three available output methods. DVD files, extracts, and writes a video TS folder to the hard drive. The ISO UDF image option returns an image file, which can be burned later on using any burning program that can handle an ISO image. Default in this panel is the DVD writer option. Here you can see my DVD writer is here. The volume label. Da Vinci Code is the name of this film. These options here show me where Clone DVD 2 will store the temporary data for burning. It's important to know that your hard drive needs to have enough space for Clone DVD 2 to write the temporary data. If you want to burn your project later again, you would leave this box here free. Preferred speed is important to ensure you have a successful burn and that the copy is usable in the months after your project is finished. 
At 12x or 8x, the chances of a successful copy and being able to play a copy in a year greatly improve. It's always best to write a little bit slower than the rating of your blank. So we have everything set. We're going to press go. Clone DVD2 begins its processing. Here to the left hand side we have a summary which again shows me the menus are preserved, the video format, one audio stream and the output method that we selected, its volume label and we selected 12 times. A log is available for the information about this process. Here we see clone DVD2 is scanning menus and creating the DVD files which will be later used for burning. When clone DVD2 starts writing to the disk that will appear here in this graph. While we're here I wanted to show you some of the help options that are, are available in clone DVD2 should you have any questions. Most important is using the application. This particular help option is a very good explanation of all the options available in clone DVD2. Showing title selection, how to cut and split individual titles from a DVD. Everything that you need to know about every possible frame in Clone DVD 2 is shown in this option. So we're going to close this now. Eventually when you see the writing proceed, a graph will show you the compression of the data, which is the difference between the source and the target volume. So I hope this little demonstration gave you an idea how any DVD and Clone DVD 2 can make the perfect team for your fair use needs. Thank you for your interest and be sure to check in at our forum, which I'm showing you here. It's an opportunity to discuss products and problems with other users. And a very important feature here is access to information about hardware, DVD drives, and blanks. Thank you for your business and for your interest. Goodbye.